your anecdote, you know, it's your anecdote. Um, would it hold up in court? No. Carnitine, taurine, tyrosine, carnosine, um, creatine, B12, DHA, EPA. Is this a nutrition argu argument debate or is this an ethical debate? Sorry. A bit of both, really, because you've got to look at, you've got to weigh it up. Okay, we're, we're, being, okay. we're going to be just talking about a video by me, where I was looking at a video by Hench Herbivore. I think it came out about nine months ago, it might be wrong. Um, basically, yeah. it's a cr critical analysis of all this video. I said, I can't remember what I said at this point, but um, Jake kind of invited me to have a discussion with him just to debate each point. Um, so the, I'm guessing the proposal, the proposition of the debate is um, whatever I've said in that video, against what Hench had said, and you can back up, substantiate his claims however you want. Um, any evidence you have, you can feel free to share on the screen. There's a present button. Um, so we will have access to the same buttons and things. I'll obviously just chuck it on the screen when it's all good and done. Anyway, um, what's the first point of the, the video that you wanted to talk about? Yeah, so first of all, mate, obviously I've come across this video. Um, I've learned little bits from Hench myself, and obviously I've been watching him. and. It just took me by surprise, actually, because obviously someone I've trusted in, um, along with many other people, um, I've listened to what he said. I, can't, I came across your video and um, a couple of points I just wanted to ask you about, really. And also beyond that, I wanted to ask, I'm not a nutritionist, so I wanted to put forward a few things for you to maybe answer and um, give give your opinion on. Um, you know, as a, as a vegan advocate, I'm a little bit confused um, as to why the carnivore thing exists. Um, you're probably the opposite, which I'm, which I'm guessing, and that's fine. Um, so later on, mate, I'd be happy just to, if you'd be happy just to let me say a few things and see what you've got to say. But yeah, but first of all, mate, um, sure. what is it about Encher before that you disagree with? Um, I could word it as what is it about a whole food plant-based diet that you don't agree with? Before I make the point, that's, that's a fair question. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, my background comes from working in a vegan health food shop, um, notably the best one in the south of England when I was there about four years ago. I wasn't vegan myself when I was there, but most of the staff members were vegan or plant based or somewhere along that sort of spectrum of um, way of eating. Um, when I was there, I was omnivorous. Um, this is actually about five years ago. I was working there. I've been carnival for four and a half years now. Um, I've met countless people with, uh, I don't want to make ad hominems, but they don't look well. Um, typical visual signs of anemia. Um, and this was in spite of supplemental vitamin I, um, vitamin B12, iron, all the cofactors, folate, all the things that, you know, they say, oh, if you have a well-formulated vegan diet with this, that, and the other, it all works well. But um, the reality is these guys' blood tests were not good. Um, inflammation was always sky high. I did notice that sometimes there is a bit of disparity between um, a whole food plant-based diet and a typical vegan diet, especially among young people. Um, young people were typically involved in like the, you know, the vegan chocolate bars, the processed foods. Um, many of them were obese when I was in university. I did go to the most diverse university in the country, which is Bath Spa, also has a high proportion of um, poverty and veganism, plant-based advocates um it's not bristol despite what people say and it's not brighton despite what people say it's bath spa um i've never seen so much mental health issues in my life um and it's coming from someone that is observing um so many times i was, I was in first year and along the front row of flats blocks that people lived in the dorms um many young ladies there you know it's fashionable to be vegan vegetarian some obviously could sustain it for a bit of time some couldn't um, I witnessed personally about 40 to 50 ambulances go by these houses, these blocks each month. Um, everyone, or I won't say everyone, a lot of people that lived along there were depressed. So typically young women, some young men, um, going out, suicidal, you know, doing things to their wrists and, you know, lots of nasty stuff that we just, we just don't want to see. Um, fellow humans don't want to see that. It's not, it's not pleasant. It's not pleasant for them and it's not a good sign. Um, now fast forward a bit, you know, working at a vegan health food shop, I was seeing everyone there was getting iller and iller and iller. And some people there were spending £200 plus on supplements per month and still coming back to me deficient. Um, 
I was staying in after work sometimes on a 50 hour work week, which I wasn't paid additional for. I was on, I believe 18 grand per year, something like that. Um, which is pants and I was staying on for half an hour to an hour extra some days, not every day, just to help people with consultations, try and work out what the problem was. Um, one of the first questions I asked is, what do you eat? Um, oh, you know, do you eat beef, the richest sauce in iron? No. Oh, or liver? No. If it's fish, salmon, eggs? No. None, none of this. No, no, no. I just eat, I just eat plant-based. Um, I take a, take a multivitamin. Um, I've got a big thing against the bit of multivitamins because I just see loads of people come back with deficiencies from here and out. Um, and since what being a carnivore, working in the carnival community now as like a nutrition coach, um, I am an actual nutritionist, and if anyone's wondering, I did get do my degree in nutrition. I do have qualifications in medical science, herbal science, supplemental science, sports science, and a load of things, which probably means something, but not a lot in the grand scheme of things. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a world expert by any means, but I know a bit about nutrition. Um, mm-hmm. And since that time, I've also come across lots of influencers online, um, and I've never met so many ex-vegans in my life. Um, I've met people that have done stints of it. My brother, for example, he wasn't vegan. He did four years of vegetarianism, and then he didn't feel so good. And a lot of my coaching clients right now are ex-vegans. And they're all lovely people because they're thriving now. They're on a more uh, mixed animal foods diet, and they seem to be doing really well. Um, Some people are experiencing some ill effects, which take time to heal. Leaky gut, intestinal permeability, when you've got autoimmune disease takes a long long time to heal check out my site at compositionconsultant.com where your journey to peak performance and optimal health begins with a degree in human nutrition and over 15 years of training experience i've guided more than 400 carnivores not just me but exceed their physique and performance goals through personalized consultations comprehensive ebooks and dedicated coaching i'm here to ensure your success join the ranks of those who have transformed their lives it's time to align your physique goals with positive health outcomes Visit compositionconsultant.com today and take the first step towards the best version of you. Um, so I don't make people empty promises. I appreciate that um, the way of eating is a broad spectrum. I'd say, largely speaking, if people are eating something like 70 to 80% meat in their diet plus, that's good enough for me. Um, they'll probably get most of the results in terms of their health journey from there mm-hmm. on out. But, um, that's my main thing against the, the vegan plant-based movement, if it were. So I've got a lot of anecdote. A, a bit of science, if you want me to extrapolate and put the mechanisms together and explain any biochemistry I can. I don't want to just sit here and just say, I'm bright, you're wrong. You know, mm-hmm. I'll listen to you as well and see what you've got to say. Maybe I've missed something, but yeah, yeah. that's my stance on it. No, I, I, I hope you understand my um, my confusion because obviously I've, I've got a vegan business. I've been vegan for five, uh, six years plant-based, five years vegan. I've met hundreds and hundreds, if not a thousand vegans uh, come in the shop talking I've met loads of people online. I know 50-year-old vegans, 80-year-old vegans, usually five to 10-year vegans um, with no problems at all. And I've even gone out there and tried to look for deficiencies and said, look, has anyone actually got a deficiency here? Because I'm hearing so much about B12, iron, all these different things. And I've never come across anyone with um, a problem. So obviously, I hope you can understand my confusion um, Mm. when people make these claims. Um, So... Before I talk about nutrition, when you said people, you know, you, you saw people slitting the wrists and things like that, uh, you're obviously aware that there's a massive depression um, epidemic going on. For sure, um, yeah. Um, not not the proportion I was experiencing at university is about fourfold. And the, the and what makes you say that everyone who was suicidal had a plant based diet? What? Because the highest the proportion of people was, that were vegan or vegetarian were. In my experience, um, vegan, you know, they were plant-based. Um, most people were plant-based when I went to university. Um, I was, I was, I was the only. Um, I wouldn't say I was carnivorous back in university by any means, but I was probably fifty percent animal foods. I was the only person there that ate mostly meat. The rest of them, if you asked them, they'd feel guilty for saying yes, um, and they'd feel like a debt to society and the earth. And they lived in misery. And they hated I'm, themselves because they couldn't. I'm, rationalize it <laughs> so well I'm, I'm sure you're aware that obviously a bad diet is a bad diet and deficiencies cause mental illnesses uh, particularly b12 and things like that so would you say that you're just against bad diets you're just not against a whole food plant-based diet which is full of vitamins and minerals would you just say that this is because of deficiencies or would you say that 
every um, well-planned, you know, vegan diet is is sufficient? I think there's a number of mechanistic issues with a, a, even a well-planned vegan diet. Um, we see if it's well-planned, it must have essential fatty acids. Um, essential fatty acids, what do we get them from in a plant-based kingdom? Um, algae oil. Um, most of them are rancid. Most of them are oxidized. Most of them cause or can cause mitochondrial dysfunction. They're also really, really expensive. Um, now, obviously, omega-3, omega-6 are essential fatty acids. If we don't have them, we cannot thrive. Um, mm -hmm. To which point people will say, but flaxseed, if you're lucky, you have the genetic poly polymorphism needed to break down that fat and turn it into active um, omega-3 of any kind. And that is an ALA, which is probably the least important omega-3 that we do need. We, we obviously need EPA and DHA. We'll find that you know one or two percent of the the um, omega three fattiest that we can take in is absorbed, and that's at best if we have the right ancestral genetic heritage in order to break that down. So, for example, if someone lived in the Arctic Circle forever for ten thousand years, hundred thousand years, a million years, whatever, and they're not going to have that polymorphism because they're not going to be munching down fl flax seeds. So there's no way they can inherit the gene in order mm. to sort of side with essential fatty acids. Um, mm. The other ones, carnitine, taurine, tyrosine, carnosine, um, creatine, B12, DHA, EPA. They're the ones that, magnesium even. Um, then there's a leaky gut side of it, so intestinal permeability. Um, fiber is contraindicated, um, to which point people will say, yeah, but these studies, I read this meta-analysis, they're not controlled studies at all. Um, they're extrapolated, they're based on guesswork, which is, you know, we, we looked at these maps of people, looked at their diet. Oh, they happen to have a lot of fiber in their diet, a bit more than those people. Well, healthy user bias, obviously per a person who's eating, you know, salad and grapefruit and apples and things is going to be a lot healthier than someone who's drinking or eating the, the blended version without all the micronutrients in full tact. Um, yeah. Then, of course, we've got the nuts and seeds. Most nuts and seeds are poisonous unless we do something to them. In fact, 99.9% .9 of the vegetation on this planet is poisonous to us if we don't prepare it the right way. Um, so I think it is possible to do a plant-based diet of some kind with the right supplements, with the right pr procurement of foods, with the right processing, fermentation, cooking methods. But I just can't see it as something I'd ever recommend because it doesn't fulfill the hierarchy of needs, being the essential fatty acids, the protein and then people say oh well, the protein is equated it's 70 grams in the us and 70 grams for on um, so seven, i believe it's 72 grams for vegetarian diets or western diets and 70 grams of protein per day for the vegan or the vegetarian i can't remember which one but the numbers are out there somewhere it came out within the last 10 years so they did a study of what people were eating um probably it's the ds score so the digestibility amino acid score of these amino acids that come from these um, vegetable proteins. Even when you mix them up and they say pair protein from peanut butter with this, with that, you're still deficient in over 15 micronutrients. So no matter how much you put in more and more and more, say something's a bit higher and leucine, something's a bit higher and carnitine. This is the thing, mate. Like, I, 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 obviously, I'm well aware of all these things that you just mentioned. And yeah. again, I'm trying to get to the bottom of it all. I've, I've, I've spent years looking at the other side. I didn't just go, oh, mm. vegan, let's do it. Do you know what I mean? I looked into it. I've listened to a lot of things from both sides and obviously made my mind up. Um, yeah. I do agree that with amigas and things like that and fatty fish and fatty acids, I do believe that the best diet on earth is uh, pescatarian. I don't eat fish myself simply because I wouldn't kill a fish um, and I never have killed a fish. So I'm there. I'm just being obviously consistent with, with my morals. Um, I do take an omega-3 probably literally once every two months. Uh, number one, because I always forget, and number two, um, I, I don't know, I just every time I take supplements, I kind of get dizzy. I just I, When I get up, I get a little bit dizzy. I don't go dizzy in general. Mm. It's just when I, when I take supplements, I seem to go a little bit light-headed, so I, don't, I just don't take them. Um, same with B12. I take, I take one every three, four, five weeks. I just, I just don't take them. Um, and this is the same with everyone I've spoke to. No one's kind of religious with their supplementation. Not anyone that I've, I've spoke to anyway. They just say, yeah, you know, I'll take the odd one here and there. Um, and this includes all vegans that have been vegan for 40 years, uh, new newish vegans, 
and I still haven't come across any problems. So my question is, you've mentioned things like taurine, you mentioned things like B12, you know, all these different things that we can't get. And from the research I've done, I've come to understand that things like taurine, uh, creatine, all these little bits and bobs, they get synthesized by the body. And although there are, you know, a lot less, um, the, the, how can I put it there? There's less of them in plants, obviously, than it's safe. I was going to eat a steak or a, a chicken breast. So mm. even though they're lower, what what does that actually mean? Because like I say, my blood tests are fine. Everyone I speak to are fine. I'm trying to understand that if this is true with all these little things that vegans can't get, why is no one running into trouble? And, you know, why is everyone's blood results okay? Because that's the, I'm just You've genuinely got, being curious yeah. there. You've got a good question there, and I can ex- I can ex- kind of extrapolate from that in my experience from from the side of the carnival. Um, your kind of point here is anecdotally, from what you see, there's no evidence to suggest the claim that a vegan diet is well planned with occasional supplementation is sufficient enough to keep someone in good stead health wise for several months, years at a time. And you know the people that have been doing it for a long, 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 long time. Fair enough. Um, I can't dispute your your anecdote. You know, it's your anecdote. Um, would it hold up in court? No. Um, would my anecdote hold up in court? No. However, there is a results. It still wouldn't hold up in court. Why is that? Because um, there's no controls to the study whatsoever. So um, all I all I would do in juxtaposition to that would be to say, okay, if we look at the epidemiology, we look at perhaps. I don't even like epidemiology. I think it's sort of crap, Jake. So I, I won't even look at that. I'd say if you look at the highest proportion or incidence, keyword incidence, of people with neurological disorders and you compared standard Western diet to the vegan diet, vegan diet, neurological disorders, much, 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 much higher um, to the nth degree. So you, it's it's to a point where it's not just by chance, you know, you've got 100 people and 51 said that yes and 49 said yes it's it's several times over i don't have the exact number i could probably pull it up if you want to to um or i could link it below in the description if people are really like oh you haven't backed it up but um it seems common knowledge to me at least that neurological disorders are, mental health problems are much higher in vegans um than even western dieters and carnivore dieters i say carnivore dieters because there's no real hard study so it's my guess um so it's not hard science there um the other point would be just trying to look at it orally. Um, there is such a thing in the carnival community where people will say, shouldn't you have scurvy? You know, shouldn't you be deficient in fibre? Your gut microbiome, you don't have enough fibre to produce short-chain fatty acids to feed colonocytes in the gut, therefore you should be dead. All this sort of stuff, because, you know, we need a gut microbiome, it goes without saying. Um, I've never met anyone with scurvy. So it's kind of the same thing as you, yet, if you look at nutritional values on our on our diets, um, you go onto the most basic app, um, nutrition tracking app, it will say, my diet has zero gram, milligrams of vitamin C in it, and I probably need uh, my personal estimate based on what I've read, which is, there's not a lot of science. It's somewhere between five and 10 milligrams per day. Um, more carbohydrates we need, the more vitamin C we need, I'm sure you're in it already, um, to fight off the, the um, glycation and improve the antioxidant status of the body. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of my take on it. I, whilst I respect your anecdote, I don't think there's any science on it. So it's more hearsay, in my opinion. Mm. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that, mate. To be honest, because you know, there's there's all these government governmental bodies, these health nutritional bodies that are, are backing it and saying, you know, it, it's fine. But what 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 is? I just don't understand. Obviously, we could go back and forth all day and go, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's good. No, it's not, but it's, you know, all, all the scientific evidence that I've come across and all the vegan people have come across and all these vegan physicians have come across points towards plants being a plant-heavy diet being being optimal. Um, yes, you know, I'm not going to sit here and go, you know, oh, if you eat meat, you're going to get fucking cancer. You know what I mean? I'm not going to sit there and say that, but I'm here to kind of defend. At the end of the day, you know, I cook food and I coach people and I push the vegan message. And if there was any reason for me not to do that, Obviously, I wouldn't do. I wouldn't do it. Obviously, because right. um, but there's just n- nothing there for me to, to to see and say. Well, I shouldn't really be doing that because of B12 and you know and all that. But if I flip that around and I say to you, okay, as a carnivore 
advocate. Am I right in saying that it's just completely carnivore? And that's yeah, what so I, that's so, what I push. As a nutritionist, someone that um, people come to because they trust, the people that come to me that trust me, typically are carnivores, animal-based web eaters. Um, if someone wants to have some berries and they tolerate them, I'm like, whatever. I'm not going to poop on your parade. If you enjoy them and it gives you a better sense of well-being, it doesn't harm you. You can go about your day the next day, feel great, go at it. And I just think there's a slight limit, and I have to say, preface, you know, if I was, if I was, like if I was de dealing out someone a, a dietary intervention, if for me, it's, I take it so seriously, like yourself, what sounds like, if someone comes to me and they say, I want the best of the best, I want the best doctor, I want to get the best surgery, I'm going to give them the best option that I have on hand. So if someone says, um, right, just get, all right, I mean, not in good shape, I don't feel, feel well, we'll put them in the best diet you can work out. So that'll be a transitional period, then a carnival diet or some variation of it, which gets them from point A to B. So it's more, for, for you, for, for both of us, it sounds like our dietary approach is um, ethical based on best practice. It's just drawing that line definition of what best practice is. Um, I'd still argue based on the N15 isotope data, which you may know about, um, it's a carnivorous diet. What would you say about the studies that show heart disease and cardiovascular disease are linked to high cholesterol, high um, LDL. Um, what do you make of the scientists that won't do studies on it because they say it's too dangerous? Uh, how can you be so sure of something that has got no long-term data? The In conflict of, of interest, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the, the conflict of interest of these studies um, is very long. Very, 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 very long in a lot of cases. Um, now, you will, Jake, you will be able to go online right now and find a study which has no conflicts of interest, which is research, which is very narrow view on a mouse, a rodent study. Um, you will not find a study which pinpoints exactly that um, heart disease is causal from a meat-based heavy diet containing um, exogenous cholesterol that your body doesn't synthesize itself. Um, the, those studies do not exist, unfortunately, because there's no intervention needed there's no controls it's not an experiment um now if we look at these researchers who i've actually met most of them uh, i met most of these people um they're not most literate of people um they do pull up strings a bit they do pull at studies which are have been debunked very heavily um is in you type in that study type it into google type in chat chat bt for hell for hell's sake um what are, the, what are the drawbacks of this study? Even ChatGPT does it better than most professors in university labs um, talking about different experiments which they cannot be able to hold. Um, you're right as well. There's an ethical argument against doing something when the standard practice has always been to focus more on reducing lipid values or at least getting them in the right lane, right, right amounts. Um, I actually went to a public health collaboration conference in the UK about two months ago, roughly. And I met one of the world's leading, apparently, um, experts on, I believe it was cholesterol and how it affects lipid values and how it can cause atherosclerotic plaque. Um, his open argument, so his blockbuster argument for his talk was, oh, guys, look at this big tub of mayonnaise. It's kind of yellow, kind of white. That's what cholesterol's doing to your organs and your, your heart and your arteries. That was it. That was his this grand opening for his scientific argument. And we then stayed for a bit longer and he made absolutely no sense at all. He's just pulling apart all these like epidemiological studies um, without any mechanism of action. And what you'll find with a lot of these studies is there's like a bell curve. Um, there's always going to be people outliers on either side. So there's going to be someone out there, no matter what you do, no matter what diet you put them on, their cholesterol is always going to be like a million, a billion, or, or you know, a few hundred, whatever it happens to be. Um, there's always going to be outliers. So there's no hard science on cholesterol, no hard science on the lipid hypothesis. Um, people in the carnival community even talk about this with me, and I always disagree with them. Um, the healthiest people tend to have higher levels of cholesterol and actually tend to eat most amount of saturated fats. So we can look at the the people of Hong Kong, obviously. Um, those people are very wealthy. Hong Kong, China, um, massive differential in terms of their their um, affluence, their level of how much they can afford, so they can afford more meat. 
Um, we also see it across the board with a lot of other countries that we know well and truly do live for long periods of time and have followed that diet, wherever that might be, meat heavy in most cases, for a very long period of time. We um, talk about Hong Kong. Saying, Sorry to interrupt. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah. Hong Kong, you mentioned before in um, the Hench video, and you said that the Hong Kong people live, I don't know if it's the longest or one of the longest living populations. Would You, you would put that down to diet? You wouldn't bring any other factors in? or uh, No, I, I did mention Hong the, Kong. the point of affluence. M meaning how much wealth they had. If they had more wealth, they could live for longer. So I'm not drawing out the idea that there's other influencing factors that could impact someone's longevity or health span. Um, but I'm, I'm seeing even with the less affluent community, you know, more or less affluent communities. Uh, if you go down that list of, say, you know, who lives close to 100, who doesn't, um, a lot of them are heavy meat eaters. And you'll find, yeah, some of them are more wealthy, some of them are less wealthy. But then I know if I go down to Lymington, um, down the road from where I live right now. The richest people in my area live there. They also don't live as long. Um, they also drink the most alcohol. So with all these epidemiological studies, we can't pick apart that much. But, um, mm. well, that's the, kind of my two cents. I do I do agree, yeah, there's a, very li there's a lot of limitation for sure. Well, I know, I know it was probably a year ago you did the video, but you did say that, you know, why has Hong Kong got a, such a high living, uh, long living population? Um, mm. And they, they, you know, they... They eat lots of saturated fat, and one of my debunks was, well, a, I mean, I've been to Hong Kong, man. There's parks everywhere. There's no cars. They walk everywhere. They've got the best healthcare yeah. system in the world. So, obviously, I'm guessing things have changed now. You do understand that there's many factors that come into play. Um, what yeah. obviously, my job, my job is to coach people, sell food, and I'm, you know, I'm a vegan, vegan advocate, vegan activist. I'm not a nutritionist. Um, I've recorded, I don't know if you, have you heard of Dr. Cavallio? Yeah, I recognize the name, yeah. He's, he's actually, he's, he's not even a vegan advocate, you know, he's, um, he, he's, he's very pro-eggs, you know what I mean? And he's, yeah. I've recorded a couple of minutes of him talking about studies. Now, I don't know about studies, I'm not a, obviously I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not, um, I'm not a researcher, you know what I mean? So, can I play this clip to you, see what you think? Because I'm yeah, not going to sit there sure. and go, there was a study that did this, there's a study that did this. I'm, I'm happily, I mean, I'm open-minded, man. If if someone ever changes my mind on this topic, I'm, I'm open to admit it, and I will start fucking eating chicken again. Um, yeah, yeah my, my, it, job, my job is, here isn't to um, convince people, it's just to make people aware um, of yeah. at least what I've experienced, what my, you know, the same sort of thing as you work with lots of people, seeing people's health clear up. Um, yeah, Matt, I'm, you, I'm people genuinely take the information to, as they want. To your reply, like, I'm not here to. I'm not here to say this is true. This is just a, a bit of a clip that I've come across. I'm like, okay, yeah, this yeah. sounds legit. So, see so what you think of this. Sure. Back three. So the message is that we don't have clinical trials looking at cholesterol and heart disease, so we can't really be sure. Is that true? This randomized clinical trial done in Northern Europe lowered LDL cholesterol in over four thousand people. And cardiovascular risk dropped by 30%. This randomized clinical trial done in the UK lowered LDL cholesterol in 20,000 people. Coronary death fell by 18%, major coronary events by 27%. This randomized clinical trial conducted in the US lowered LDL cholesterol in over 4,000 people. Major coronary events fell by 24%, strokes by 31%. This randomized clinical trial. You, you get the picture. You get you get the idea of what. Yeah. So there's, there's so two these studies. What what would literally yeah. your reply be to these? Like, what would you say? There's two very obvious um, negligent use of terminology on their part. Um, risk is one of them. They use the word risk. So risk is a causative statement, meaning intervention A has happened, which means something else has happened downstream. So, for example, if I flick your hat and it gets caught on camera and your hat falls off, okay, the risk of me being around you and your hat falling off is is higher. There, there, there's a level of risk because I've done it. I've proven it's been done. Um, now, they haven't proven any risk factors because they haven't controlled thousands of people. They haven't locked all these thousands of people in a lab. Um, <laughs> and it comes down also to the healthy user bias as well. Um, so, for example, you might know about that. I'm, I'm talking about this. So, like, healthy user bias, people that spend more money on 
health, leisure. They don't drink. They don't smoke. Um, maybe they don't eat as much junk food, which means they're not buying Coca-Cola, which means they're not buying Hagen dazs for the Domino's, stuff like that. So that's another point to take away from that one. Um, and the third point, which is demonstrably disgusting um, for a medical practitioner professional like whoever speaking in that voice note um, to make, was <laughs> um, LDL cholesterol. Well, J Jake, LDL and cholesterol are two different things. HDL mm -hmm. is a different thing. So why are they saying LDL cholesterol if they're two different things? Which tells me they don't know what they're talking about. So it's like, it's like me saying, um, your BMI, B B BMI body fat percentage, Jake, is 142.6% units. It's not, you know, it's a mix match. It doesn't make sense. Oh, but yeah, then if no, the guy yeah, says, BMI. yeah, it's, it's a mix match. They're like cholesterol, repair molecule, antioxidant. A body does make it. A body can extract it from food, blah, blah, blah. Um, LDL carries it to do its job. Um, they do different uh, various other things as well to do different jobs, in different tissues. So um, that so, guy doesn't know what he's talking about for three reasons. So all those studies. So what you're saying again? I'm not saying it is or it isn't. This I I believe that from what I've gathered over the years that, for example, the pescatarian diet is the best diet going, in my opinion. From what I've gathered, um, in my opinion, from what I've gathered, I'm going to say that too much meat, too much um, cholesterol, or whatever you want to call it, is. Mm detrimental that's that's what i believe if i don't really care because obviously i'm here to defend the vegan lifestyle i'm here to yeah. ask questions and wonder why what we do into animals is is necessary do you know what i mean it, it just blows my head um so are you saying that you're saying that there is no risk factors involved with high meat high animal protein consumption do, and do you believe that is that is that no i i I, I think know. there's I think there's possibility that with any dietary intervention you make, there's uncovered earth, meaning there could be a mechanism where something happens. You cook your meat too long, you store it the wrong way. It, you know, something happens along the line, you know, there is there's always gonna be, oh, APOE, this, that, the other, blue zones, um, low melinda, seventh day of it. All these things have been debunked, guys. If you're listening to this, just type in that whether it is debunked. Um, it's not it's not hard ask. It's not something I need to Google for you um, if you're listening to this. But I think that, <sighs> largely speaking, we know we've been eating a largely carnivorous diet for three and a half million years for N15 isotope data. Again, if you want me to reference this, anyone that's listening, N15 isotope data, Carnivore diet, human diet, you'll find it. It is there and it is easy to access. It'll be one of the first links. Um, you'll look at, basically looked at the long bones of human remains and they found out through carbon dating what we ate pretty much with guaranteed detail, with exact efficiency. Um, now, it's not exclusive to animal foods. All foods do yield a carbon date to them, but we just don't find much at uh, plant-based foods. So, yeah, we will find, find the remains where they ate some tubers, spat out the fibre, took the sugar or starch out of it, but we, they weren't finding that these people were eating massive amounts of vegetation. Um, and if know, we look at the human... again, again, I can say, that I have seen things that say, oh, you know, we found um, um, we found that the, the, the Romans were, were eating uh, wheat and rye, and then you'll see things like, what oh, happened the to Egyptians the Romans, were... Well, what, what happened, happened to, to anyone in that age? We all, we all died at 25, 30 years old, didn't we? You know what I mean? It was, you don't matter what, what heart yeah, disease. You, all kinds of different problems back in the day we didn't have a long lifespan so yeah this is why i don't like the back and forth because it's like yeah but i saw i saw this and i saw this and i saw this this is where it never ends and this is where this is why i kind of like stay away from it and i just look at you know anecdotal your best your best people dates, and, jake oh, i agree is your immediate surroundings yeah i, I, I get behind that um we've had a different I mean. subjective experience like i can't that's what i said at the start i can't dispute what you've said I can't dispute your anecdote. I can't dispute your experience. Um, the same with me. Like when everyone comes to me and you know they're all feeling better, leaner, healthier, I'm, I'm not going to change it. So I know, I know, I get that. You, like I've admitted, you know, I'm not going to sit and say if you eat chicken breast once a day till you're 80, it's going to give you um, colon cancer. You know, I'm not going to sit there and say that. So, would you also agree that you can't really look at 
the vegan population and say, you know, you're going to you're going to hit, you know, you're going to hit a trouble in in your late fifties because of a certain reason. Like we, there's no evidence there to suggest that. You know, I mean, you might say, oh, you know, you're lacking in this. Anyone can lack in any um, any vitamin. Do you know what I mean? Like the the supplement industry is worth what two hundred billion. Mm-hmm. You're either deficient or you're not, and there's ways around that whether you eat meat or not. So. Would you say that it, it is okay to be vegan and eat a, a plant-based diet, or would you say, you know, you're going to run into trouble? Or because I've heard this five-year thing get get passed around. Are you? Yeah, the, the, f- the four to five year. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the four to five year thing does seem to be the cutoff in my experience. Um, anyone I speak to is like, three years. Yeah, they feel alright. Mm, I'm getting a bit bored of it now, or you know, it's hard to eat out in restaurants. You start to hear the excuses come in. Year four. I don't feel very well. My skin's grey. I feel tired. I'm light sensitive. If I go outside, I get headaches. I burn a lot quicker. My skin's dry. You know, I don't sleep as well. My stomach's always sore. I have to eat four kilos of food per day because I'm eating a whole food plant-based diet. Um, all those sort of they're the sort of things I typically will hear. Um, but I, I, I hear will that say well. that, I, I hear that a lot from ninety-eight percent of the people around me who who are meat eaters. You know what I mean? But I can't say it's because you had KFC last Saturday. You know what I mean? It's because you're unhealthy. KFC is so, very different to um, the steak and eggs. Exactly. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. So w- whatever you eat, whether you eat carnivore, whatever, you're going to be deficient if you're unhealthy. So would you say that I can live a healthy life from a whole foods plant-based diet um, and not touch any meat and be okay? Like, would, would you accept that if I accept that obviously you can't eat meat and be okay? Because then we go down the path of um, do we need to be doing it? Um, I can't it's see a game any of probabilities. I, I'd say it's a game of probabilities. Um, I'd love to be able to just agree with you and say, yeah, I hope you. Well, obviously, I do hope you are well. You can do it for as long as you want. It gives you peace of mind at night. You sleep well, whatever. Great, you know, perfect. Um, problem is, if we're talking about a game of probabilities, I'd have to say the probability is low. Um, the four to five year thing, I believe it's eighty four percent of carnivores. I'm sorry, not kind of. I think it's vegans um, quit after four to five years. Um, 95, 90% of them claim catastrophic health complications. You seen that study? I may have 84 or 90% mixed up the one around one, but yeah. That, 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 that study, I've heard that one before, 84%. It's like, you know, 70 something percent of people in January will hit the gym and never go to the gym again. Um, it, it's, it, there's no legs to that, man. I've looked into it. Um, Yes, people do try a vegan diet and go, oh, I felt dizzy and whatever. But when you actually ask these people, and I haven't met many of them because most people I know who have seen the shit that goes on to animals have gone, I'm not doing that again. I'll make it work. I'm just going to eat healthily. And they've been fine. Uh, and then I think you'll find that when you do speak to people who say, oh, yeah, I tried it for a month and you know my, my teeth fell out or something stupid like that, it's you know exactly what they were eating. I, they were eating frozen shit and there wasn't yeah. a healthy diet. So that doesn't obviously boil down to the, the plant diet. It boils down to processed shit that they were eating. And it, and then the same yeah. obviously can go the other way with, with meat. So my question to you is, do you accept that, you know, we, we can live a healthy life without doing what we do to animals? Um, well, let me, let me rephrase like, it. Let, 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 let me rephrase yeah. it. So I eat a healthy whole food plant based diet if i didn't and i ate a little bit of chicken or whatever added in where will that get me am i going to live another 20 years in your opinion like what where's this how do you justify what goes on so i think you everyone agrees don't know that what goes on is absolutely horrific it's horrendous um especially factory farms so you know what are the forms of this would you accept just to get a little bit healthier or you know, because let's face it, we're not going to live till 100. The chances of me and you living between Definitely 75 not me, and, <laughs> and, and 85, we, we, yeah. we're going to be there or thereabouts, aren't we? So how can we justify doing what we do to animals on a mass scale for a snack or a, you know, a burger? Is this a nutrition arg- argument debate or is this an ethical debate? Sorry. A, a bit of both, really, because you've got to look at, you've got to weigh it up. Okay, it would be. Think, okay, it would be. You got to weigh it up. You've got to think: yeah. Is it worth? You know, for, let's let's just put it this way. You know, would I do what we do to animals to a dog just so I can live an extra year? No, I wouldn't because I don't want to fund violence. You know what I mean? So, 
where's the I, I don't get where the where the justification is it's like what what are you open to get from eating meat and doing what we do yeah for, for, for me eating meat means i um I, I know personally how many i know personally within a ballpark figure how many animals i kill each year um to a very close degree actually is that including um, what the animals eat as well the animals eat yeah yeah yep yeah. 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 everything down the food chain down to the microalgae that are living in the, the ponds and the fields um, I can mm-hmm. probably make a good, really, really good estimate. Um, I kill less animals than any vegan alone on the planet right now um, by a factor of several quadri- quadrillion. That's a massive shout, man. But we can talk about that if you like. I'd, I'd like to. Um, I thought this was a nutrition uh, debate, but the ethical side, I mean, I, I do... Uh, put it this way, I, I live about... F- f- about five to ten minutes to walk away from farms. Um, most of, well, about maybe half of my meat, a third, comes from those farms. Um, my beef comes from 20, 15 miles away from Fording Bridge. Eggs, if I eat them, dairy comes from here. There's lambs. There's another farm down the lane. Um, so, yeah. So, that obviously cuts down the food chain, the ethical side a bit. Uh, these fed animals are well fed, all that sort of thing. Um, but, but does it? <laughs> Yeah, massively. Um, if we look in the US alone, there's something like four quadrillion insects and other animals being killed through uh, plant-based agriculture every single year. Then the producing factors which... of avocados, almonds, how much water they need, um, that obviously takes nutrients from the ground. Anytime you extract from the ground, something else will as you know, come, come out of it, whether it be animals, resource, hydration, whatever it is. Um, then there's polluted ground. I'm more for like agricultural, um, rotational crops, all that sort of stuff. I'm not daft, you know. I'm not a wasteful person. But uh, I do see an animal food-based diet being more ethical in terms of the death of less animals than a vegan or plot-based diet. Um, that's eating stuff so, from all over the shop. So would you say that it's, it's you know, I've heard this number before, this, you know, this trillions of, um, of bugs and whatever that die, and obviously that's, that's something that both meat eaters and vegans can agree on is that we need to kill these little bugs and whatever we, we've got to do something at the minute to produce food and also humans die as well humans die in food production um mm. and i think we can agree that it's necessary but what we don't think is necessary is obviously violating the rights of mammals just because that that happens so um you know just because so many thousand million bugs die I don't see why that gives us the right. Again, I'm going down the ethics route. Uh, it comes right. down think, to um, all the suicidal um, young women that are at my university that were killing themselves because they felt guilty for eating a hamburger. I can't see that. It sounds quite uh, bombastic, quite sen- sensationalistic, but that's the truth. These people are being driven to severe anxiety. But every single person I know who is depressed or anxious eats meat. How many people do you know? And how many people do you know that are vegan? How many people do you know that are not? How do I a lot know? of people depressed. At least half of this country right now, as we sat sit here speaking right now, are being given in a in a year span, three six five uh, years day, day span, um, one medication for antidepressants every year. I agree. There's a there's a big problem with it, and I think massive, it comes from massive, lack yeah. of exercise, lack of um, you know the, the the access to food and social media and all these different things, but. To pinpoint it on someone eating a veggie burger, I, 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 I understand that you know you've got your you've got your education on nutrition, but to say that, mate, I can't really I can't really say that that's there's any legs there because, like I said, no, there's no there's no um, empirical data to support my claim. No, um, but when you see people, you know, ambulances are pouring in, you're like, well, this can't be a good idea. A bit, a bit were, were they drunk? Lost, really, were these uni know. students drunk or all uni students are always drunk? I was never this is what I mean, that. man. Like, yeah, you you can't pinpoint depression on on a vegan diet, surely. Um, yes, there will be some depressed vegans. Yes, there will be some some depressed fucking ginger people. Do you know what I mean? Like, what what, yeah, what yeah. Else, how that links? I don't get how that links. But um, but let me ask you a question, man. So you're willing to do what we do to animals. You're willing to fund that industry to become healthier. You claim to be to be healthier. What other what other extremes would you go to? What other forms of exploitation are okay to get the required nutrition that you say that we need? Because again, from from our view, 
I know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of vegans with zero health issues. Um, most of them are bodybuilders or doctors. I know vegan blood doctors, uh, mm. surgeons. I, I know all across the board, you know what I mean? Zero health issues. So it's quite obvious that we can live without doing this. Um, I'm not saying that we can eradicate all death and all suffering, obviously, but, you know, can I where's the line with the the other end so you've got crop deaths at this end where's the line the mm. other way like where can we stop oh, I see that. and then and then justify it by saying yeah but i need that meat because i need my b12 or something that's a good question um i don't personally if i'm honest the ethical side of it outside of being responsible not wasting food not letting animals be deliberately abused um i know how much the animals i eat are killed um, apart from the chickens, I don't know. I couldn't say. I don't eat that much chicken, though, to be fair. So that's my um, my guilt, if there was guilt. But I know, eating a chicken, I'm killing less animals than someone breaking down crops in the field. Um, but in terms of like how, how far along, that's a really tricky question. It's a good question as well. Um, I've got to think about this one. I'd say it comes down to my level of suf suffering in, in life. Um, I live with autistic spectrum disorder. My needs as a human, in terms of my absolute needs, are probably higher than most people's. Um, outside of the bodybuilder aspect, if I was just a normal bloke, I'm still autistic. I still have spine disease. I still have information which can easily creep up. Um, the best diet for me through trial and error, through experimental um, inter interventions using diet and lifestyle factors, all the stuff we talk talked about, um, being healthy, trying to keep fit, fit and active, stuff like that, getting some sunlight maybe. Um, outside of that, the biggest lever I have is my diet. Um, mechanistically speaking, we can look at studies on ketogenic diets on autistic people. We can look at ketogenic diets on carnitine, on autism, um, depression, um, taurine on autism, and gut microbiome. Um, intestinal permeability is much higher in autistic people which means we have dodgy guts basically which means we don't assimilate food as well so for me it, digesting eating consuming the most bio bioavailable nutritious human appropriate species specific species appropriate diet is going to be the best for me um and me neglecting myself um personally i'd rather not um I've, it's happened for too long um I, I have to use prescribed medical cannabis i'm practically lying down right now um, I've used medical cannabis before this talk, just so I can sit here. Now, if I didn't use those things and followed a plant-based diet, which I did do at one point, um, I'd have killed myself, personally. Um, I, I, did, I did try a vegan diet, a strict vegan diet, no nonsense, if you want to call it that, um, for about four days. Um, by the fourth day, I was ready to chop my head off. I'm not exaggerating. I really did. I hated my life. Um, I felt so manic, and I have experienced this with people before. And, you know, going back to anecdotes again, but in consultations, I speak to people. They're crying at me for a video, and I'm like, I've this is the first time I've met you, and you're telling me that this is how you felt until you started carnival like two, three months ago. And I'm like, Ugh. you know, so the, the, for, for me, the, that is a massive override, so I can't. I couldn't default or change my diet unless they could right. print what, perfect food. What what was what when you say you didn't like it? What was it the way you felt? Was it the um, what was it? What, yeah, immediate immediate dry skin, um, severe diarrhea, gastric distress, which you'd get with any change of diet. To be fair, in all honesty, um, so mm -hmm. if if I did it again, yeah, I'd have to transition much slower. Um, but this manic feeling was not nice. Um, and actually, funny enough, I actually thought, well, you know what, Jake, I'm going to meet everyone halfway here you want to try a meat meat fruit and honey experiment so i did my own experiment i come from a scientific background i adjusted all the variables the best i could the intervention was i reduced my fat and increased my carbohydrate and that gap in terms of carbohydrate to fat ratio was filled by fruit and honey that was peeled so i think it's bananas apples um bit of mango grapes and honey on the side um so calories were equated i gained body fat in three days as proven by waist measurement, photos, digital body fat calipers, and by impedance electrical scales. And I was like, okay, I'm not eating that much food, I'm gaining fat. I feel inflamed. People have noticed I feel inflamed. <laughs> My skin feels itchy and dry, and I'm really bloated. So that was the halfway point, and that didn't even work. So there, there we have it. That's that, my. 
Um, everything you've said there, I am the opposite. You know, I've, I'm I'm below 11 percent body fat. Um, I've built muscle. I feel good. Got loads of energy. I recover well. Um, all these different things. If it was, if that was the case for you, if you, if someone said to you now, okay, then I'm going to put you on a vegan um, diet plan, and you tried it and you felt good and everything was fine and you got the same results as I got, would you then say, right, I'm staying on that because what we do to animals is fucking horrendous and unnecessary or would you be like nah i like the taste of steak i'm going to carry on eating it because i think there's a, there's a um, cop out again, I'm, not saying, I'm, not, I'm not saying you didn't have yeah. these i'm not saying you didn't have these problems um what i'm saying is a lot of people would just use that as a cop out they'll go oh my teeth fell out my hair fell out and they'll just go yeah that's because you're addicted to meat um and I've oh seen yeah i mean again. compliance it compliance is the science to any diet if it, if you can comply better to a diet and enjoy it more, you're going to be able to stick to it for a longer period of time. Um, I did the intervention. It didn't work. I was going to do it for a week. Um, I managed three days. So it just goes shares. As much as I'd love to say, you know, um, I still have meat in my diet. I was still equating my protein. So my nutritional profile was not too different. It's just the fat soluble vitamin profile was slightly warped to one side. Um, the problem with the, the sugar and fat in the diet in one given bolus or at one given time is... Um, it activates something called the Randall cycle, which is always pro-inflammatory, which is a bi bi biochemical system that the body activates within the blood, within the cells, to basically cut off um, intracell or it's intracellular blood, um, the substrate in your bloodstream. Oh, sorry, the um, the NGS in your bloodstream, so the sugar and fat yes, is there in your bloodstream from trying to enter the cell at the same time. When that happens at the same time, it's pro-inflammatory, and that's what leads to lots of inflammatory diseases. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, what, I, what I worked in ve vegan... If, if you didn't yeah. get these, if you tried it again, you didn't get these troubles, because I'm guessing that you looked at some point in your life, you've you've got a heart, you've got a brain, um, you've obviously got compassion to, to some extent, everyone has, and, you know, you saw something and went, oh, that's not very good, I'm going to try a vegan diet. My question was, if you tried the vegan diet again, and you didn't get these problems, would you stick with it and stay away from animal agriculture, or would you would you go back and say, "Oh no, I still love the taste of meat"? Because you obviously went vegan for a reason. Am I, am I right in saying that you you maybe saw? I did it for a, I did it for experimental purposes. Um, I did it with a blank mind, blank slate. Um, mm. There's few people, people that are vegan around me, and I was like, well, "I'll try it." My brother's vegan or vegetarian at that point in time, I believe, and I was like, "I'll try it." Um, I'm one of those people, I'm probably a bit like you, quite analytical, quite sort of like try to find things out, or to work things out. And I was like, this isn't, no, this is not cutting it. Um, so there'd be no, there'd be no intervention in my life, knowing what I know now, and also knowing where I was back then, um, where I changed my diet. Um, I think I'd actually be more um, incompassionate for eating less animals um, in yeah. terms of the, the food that goes directly on my plate. Yes, yeah, so because you've said a couple of things that you you eat less, uh, sorry, you eat meat that causes less uh, suffering than the average, average vegan. And you also said that you only eat from certain farms and things like that. So is that because to, you have got a level of empathy to some degree where what, you know, what we, what we put animals through is, is not right. So you try and pick the best option that yeah, you can. Yeah, like. And why is that? Why yeah. Is yeah, I try to pick the best option because I'm not a, um, I'm not a religious man. I don't believe in a God per se. I'm spiritual in a sense that I kind of hope everyone has goodwill. I hope that, you know, an animal, whether it be the smallest and the biggest human being, um, isn't harmed in some way. If there's a way to reduce harm, that also doesn't reduce harm to me. I'm all for it. If it means that me jumping over a, a snail or something means it doesn't die, therefore it stays in its food chain, it collects bugs or whatever it does, I'm not going to deliberately go out my way in a rainy day when it's cold, dark, and miserable to avoid it. But I'm also, if I do see it, I'm going to go around it. Mm -hmm. That's that's it. Because it, cause it um, would be so necessary to kill the snail, wouldn't it? Um, it'd, be, it'd be a waste, yeah. There's other yeah. animals who do that predatorily. I'm not a predator of a snail. The same way mm -hmm. a shark wouldn't eat another shark, what I think they would say. You so you're against, you're against the unnecessary killing. Um if it was proven, because obviously you don't agree, you don't believe that it is, but if it was proven that meat and dairy in the diet was unnecessary, um, would you would you stay clear of it or would you continue to eat it? 
Because obviously you've said that you would not unnecessarily kill an animal if you saw one. So would it be the same? If if the alternative was sufficient to keep me at current health status without detriment, yeah. So if, so if they come up with a plant-based you... thing, I'd eat it if it kept me in the same health. But if it was less, no. So if someone presented solid evidence to you, you know, let's just say you sat down with a, a physician and whatever else and you, your dietitian and you sat down there for six mm -hmm. six months and you followed a strict plan and they proved to you that your markers are going to be exactly the same, if not better, you would then switch to a plant-based diet and become vegan because of that. So the only reason you do this is because you, you feel that it benefits your health. For, uh, the health is the epitome of my existence um so i've not i've not been healthy for a long time so any health i can regain is i'm going to take it um my day-to-day my -day life is probably a four out of ten well-being um before that it was a two my pain is about an eight or a nine um so i i don't th there's no way on earth i would ever change anything unless i knew my health could be maintained or improved somewhat mm. so you, you know what it's like to suffer then man i'm and yeah i'm sorry for yeah. your your troubles it sounds horrible but um but yeah this is Thank this you, is yeah. why this is i think a lot of the lot a lot of problem is people they have never been in this position they've never been in a suffering position some people have never been fucking cold let alone hungry or yeah. dirty or you know and you've got that that experience of suffering so and this is why I, I do what i do man because i've you know i'm not saying that i've had a tough time but i've just got a level yeah. of empathy for everything that lives and it should be all pain free. It should all be, uh, you know, it should all be as least suffering as possible. And what I've seen in some Absolutely. places with animals, um, you know, talk about the black man and the white man and equality and all that and our ability to suffer and experience pain. It's all the same, isn't it? You know, I wouldn't say the same about a slug. I don't know the science of it, but um, in terms of mammals, especially and what we put in yeah. food, uh, and you can understand where I'm coming from because. Again, I, I'm I'm open to it. I'm you know my, my view is why are we eating all this meat? Why are we eating all this dairy when 99% of us know that we don't need to? Um, and this is why I ask you. I say if it was the case where you come to realise that it wasn't necessary, would you change? And you've said yes. So yeah. I believe that your ethics align with mine, but there's something yeah, there sure. that's just not not the same because of the way the what you believe to do with your own health. So. Yeah. And it, it, there's not really a lot I can say there. It's um, it's. I think all the evidence it is there. For me to, to... It, yeah, it comes down to subjective first person, first world experience of the world that we live in. Um, how do we enjoy it the most with the least amount of harm to other people? Um, You're vegan. I try to stick to my step, my took myself. I try to, you know, align well with people around me if I can. If I'm a burden at times, which I can really be, I avoid people, and I make it very clear. Um, there's nothing wrong with you right now. It's me. I'm avoiding you. My life has to be like this right now. Otherwise, we'll all suffer, and it's not fun. So <laughs> I completely get that. But um, yeah, I think we covered quite a bit of ground with this. And I think although we haven't come to a firm conclusion with with it, I do believe we've got some similar ground in terms of um, our belief systems, in terms of re reducing harm, um, trying to prevent further damage to the soil, stuff like that, needless waste. I, I'm not for that at all. Um, we've obviously had different experiences with, with clients, so I can't really fault that. Um, I just hope that you continue to have successful clients uh, that come your way for coaching, to your, to your store for food, and um, they continue to pick you know, whole foods, regardless of what that is, whether that be you know, fruit, vegetables, or just anything better than Cocoa Pops and Pop-Tarts. Absolutely, man. Yeah, absolutely. We, we all know that pro processed foods are bad. We all know that, man. Um... Can I ask you one more question before before I go? Sure. Sean yeah. Baker is a big he's a big um, carnivore advocate. Yeah. He's recently said that he's not sure now. Is that right, or is that the other one? Is it Cheffy? Who was who said that? Um, not, Sean, not Sean Baker has recently changed his stance slightly. Mm -hmm. um, the main reason for that um, now this is not his wording, but read between the lines. Um, He's been a bit more open recently to appeal to a large audience, which is what is coming to him from um, his current health practice that he endorses, that he runs, his website, his clinic, online doctor's stuff, wherever it is. Um, for him to get more reach, sometimes people will say, 
oh, I'm more kind of down the middle now, you know, then therefore down the line, you know, Jake might be a bit, oh, you know, I'll eat a bit of salmon, might eat eggs one day, maybe, maybe a bit of chicken, maybe, um, or someone else in that sort of position. They can be easily a swing towards a carnivore diet because they're already there and they're not turned off by this massive guy, six foot five, ten to eat two pounds of steak a day. So it gives them an, uh, a rule of rule of entry, rule of access, basically. That's that's what it's coming down to. So you decide that it's more for a, a social media ploy, you know, just to to get more people on board. Um, I th- strongly think so. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm I'm still there. You know, like I said earlier, many times I said, you know, if if, if I come across evidence that proves that the the vegan diet is a load of shit, and I'm gonna, you know, lose my teeth when I'm 48, which I've seen enough evidence that I won't. Um, you know, if that, you know, if, if if that did come come to me, I would happily say, okay, I was wrong. But can can it be the same? Can it can it be said the same for you? Where if someone in the future was to present you with evidence of the vegan diet being optimal, um, you know, with a little B12 tablet here and there, um, would you be open to it? Or because I've I found a lot of people they're just set in the ways. They're like, you know, I I like the taste of meat. It's our culture. All this crap. It doesn't stand mm-hmm. up, man, because things change and life moves on and we evolve and we get better in most. Yeah, um, so I think so, our, our genetic biological system is 99.9% identical between us. Um, there's obviously some things which we will thrive more on or less on. There's that epigenetic variance where, oh, you grew up here, I grew up next to a river. The diet's a bit different, you know, what we've gained over that period of time. Um I'd say there's always that margin of error when it comes to diets where you'll never be perfect with the diet, but you try to edge further and further towards what you're trying to achieve in terms of health. Um, So I do tell people to chase health outcomes, chase physique outcomes, whatever it is you're trying to achieve. Um, Somewhere along that line, you'll find a little gap in your diet, whether it be with some onions here and there, some broccoli or whatever it is, whatever you do or don't happen to have, where you feel your best. That's why I tell people to um, stay there. Um, unfortunately, I just don't see many people doing it with a lot of vegetation in their diet. Um, keto can be okay. But, you know, it's a step in a more fatty acid based metabolism, which is lower in deuterium, better for mitochondrial function, better for mental health through some ketogenic diet studies, which we can look at. Um, but outside of that, it's, you know, you just leave people as they are. Um, there's such a thing as like, you know, cream crop rises to the top um evolution 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 you know are we going to adapt or not and we'll, we'll just see i mean one analyst that you might like is the um carnivore diet versus the versus the um vegan diet seo google search console analytics um vegan diet yeah it had a bit of a a bit but it never really peaked it's always been downhill since um you can look this up yourself guys if you're listening to this um the same with the carnivore diet the carnivore diet's peaked a little bit but it's gone slightly up a little bit but it's not gone down so we're seeing kind of like a a head-on-head battle i think 50 Mm -hmm. years down the line when we're looking at that in the future and we can say these two guys on the internet one of them got it right they both got it right one got it wrong whatever and we'll we'll see like we'll see i think we both got it right Um, mate i think i think we can live healthily with meat and i think we we can definitely live healthily with with a plant-only diet and i think the only thing that's different is the 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 massacre of billions of animals which is obviously what i what i um try and support mm. or don't support should i say uh, mate final word yeah. final word sorry does a sign does scientific data point towards a plant-based or animal heavy diet being the best for prevention of disease so if you have to choose one or the other uh, an animal heavy diet or plant-based uh, based on scientific data and i know what you're sure say. so yeah you know what i'm gonna say um I'll point to the evidence as well, just for anyone listening. Um, first piece of evidence, probably the strongest evidence I think I have, N15 isotope data on carbon dating of long bones of human remains throughout the past three and a half million years. Um, that's the first piece. Second piece, the mitochondrial um, health, which can be measured, checked in various different ketogenic diet style studies. Um, we have seemed to have found that it's there's a lot of crossover between ketogenic diet studies and carnivore diet studies. Um, they're not mutually exclusive, but there is some overlap. Um, what we're seeing anecdotally across the board in metabolic psychiatry and clinical 
um, laboratories, psych psychiatric wards even. Um, the ketogenic diet does seem to improve a lot of mental health outcomes, so those studies. The third studies will probably be by Paleomedicina, pa Paleo Medicina, which is run by Jeffier Clemens in Hungary, and they've taken upwards of 8,000 patients over the past 10, 15, I guess about 10, 10, 10, 10 years. Um, they've measured their intestinal permeability levels, and they find the closest correlation, or maybe association, what we right word, between improving health outcomes of various different diseases. When I say various, I'm, I'm not talking about one or two, like uh, bipolar, uh, depression, and I'm talking like hundreds, like there's literally hundreds of cancers and all sorts of things, um, which they've put into remission thanks to a carnivore ketogenic diet. So it's a high fat carnivore diet, basically. Um, on a personal level, my friend Andrew Scarborough, about 10 years um, carnivore, something maybe 12 years, brain cancer in remission, aggressive brain cancer, not the sort of cancer you just laugh at and think, oh, uh, he'll, have, he'll have it taken out, it'll be all right. No, this guy has been for it all. He's really struggled to get where he is in terms of his health journey right now. And um, he's a picture of health. He looks much younger than me, and he's about 40 years old. <laughs> um, so there's my three or four pieces of data, like the strongest data I have. Between that, if someone looked at it, they could work it out and think, yes or no, they don't have to agree with me, but that's that's my mm -hmm. um, speculation basis. I'm looking through, test. man. I'm going to... I'm going to play it back and I'm going to, I'm going to look into sure, every yeah. point you've made. And like I said, man, one day, if the proof's there and I can justify killing an animal and violating their rights for that, for that extra bit of nutrition and health, um, I'm open to change, man, but we'll see. Cheers, Jonathan. For sure, yeah. Yeah, cheers, Jake. Thanks for coming on. Build muscle and lose fat on the carnivore diet.